Okay, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, uh, discrete math students. Uh, some of you have expressed an interest in learning a little bit about Haskell. Uh, I'm not going to put a big emphasis on Haskell in this course for a couple of reasons. Number one, the course is only seven weeks long, and you're not going to learn, we're not going to have enough time to learn discrete math plus Mathematica, and plus a lot of Haskell in just seven weeks. That, that's not realistic. Um, but I think Haskell is an interesting programming language. It does actually have a lot in common with Mathematica. Mathematica and Haskell are different, but there's, there's a lot of overlap, especially when it comes to the list data structure. And uh, both have a big, um, you know, both put a big emphasis on recursion, and it, they have a lot in common. So we're just going to talk about some basic things in Haskell in this video. Um, I will most likely use Haskell as the basis for an extra credit assignment later on in the semester. If you don't want to do the extra credit assignment, that's your business. That's your choice. If you want to do the extra credit assignment and, you know, increase your grade a little bit, fantastic. I know some of you, actually quite a few of you, are computer science or computer engineering majors. Um, and, you know, learning a little bit about Haskell is to your benefit. I think it will, um, you know, it will help you, especially since a lot of the mainstream languages nowadays like C, C++, Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, a lot of those languages are starting to borrow uh, functional features from languages like OCaml and Erlang and Haskell and Mathematica. So even though Haskell and Mathematica will probably never be super popular languages, they, they are definitely exerting an influence on the popular mainstream languages. So, you know, that's enough reason right there to take a look at Haskell and Mathematica, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm sure you're tired of looking at my pretty sunset on my computer. Uh, I'm going to open up Terminal. Okay, if you're using, I'm not a big Windows user. I, I use Windows very rarely. I use it uh, when I have to, but I, I, I don't use Windows at home. Uh, I actually uh, really don't like the Windows operating system. So usually I use Mac or I use Linux. So if you're using Mac or Linux, you would open up a terminal window. I think Windows has something similar. I believe it's called the PowerShell. So inside your Windows PowerShell or your Linux terminal or your Mac terminal, uh, you would type GHCI. And I'm assuming that you've installed Haskell. If you haven't installed Haskell, well, the GHCI command isn't going to work. But if you've installed Haskell, then yeah, the GHCI command should work. Okay. All right. So G, let's start that again. So G8, sorry, GHCI. Okay. It's uh, kind of slow here. Okay. There we go. The latest version, I believe, is 8.8.3. Um, so. It says here, let me see, loaded GHCI, I stands for interactive. It refers to the REPL, the REPL environment. Um, and GHC actually stands for Glasgow Haskell Compiler. So GHCI stands for Glasgow Haskell Compiler interactive okay so it's a REPL it's actually it's a REPL it's not quite as good as Mathematica's REPL but it's not bad okay it's not bad it's 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 pretty decent okay so 
what can we do with Haskell? Well, there are a lot of things you can do with Haskell. Whatever you can do in Java, you can actually do in Haskell. But Haskell is a complex language. Um, and uh, we're just going to learn some of the basics, OK? So one of the most important data structures in Haskell is the list. So for example, let's do this. Um, 1, 200. OK, and Enter, not Shift-Enter, just Enter. In Mathematica, it's Shift-Enter. In Haskell, you just press Enter, OK? So 1, 200. OK, this gives me all the integers from 1 to 100. OK. Now, let's say that I'm only interested <clears throat> in 5 and the multiples of 5. Those are the only numbers in this list that I'm interested in. OK. So I could do filter. I'm going to create an anonymous function, OK, mod x5 is equal to 0. What is mod? Mod is the remainder in a division problem. It's very important in computer science. It's also very important in discrete math. So if you divide a number by 5, and the remainder is 0, that means the number is a multiple of 5. This is not just a Haskell issue. This is ubiquitous. This is true in any programming language. This is true in all branches of mathematics. OK? And then I have my list, 1, 200. OK? And that's what I get. So I filtered out my original list to keep only numbers that are multiples of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay? And that's called filtering. Now, Mathematica has something similar, but in Mathematica, it's not called filter. It's called cases. It's called cases, and it's a little bit different. Okay? But I mean, it, it, it produces the same result, but the syntax, the syntax is going to be different. But in Haskell, it's called filter. Okay? So what if I have, uh, let me see, what if I have a list of names? Okay, so names, let's see, David. Daniel, Douglas, Lisa, oh, uh, Leah, Aaron, Andrea, uh, let's see, Deidre, and uh, I don't know, what's uh, Jason? And let's say Joshua, Janet, or Janice, Janet, uh, Benjamin, and uh, what's a uh, Francine, and Francisco. Oh, what happened here? Okay, because you know why that happened? Because um, I tried to extend it over to the next line. So to do that, let's let's try that again. Okay, so we have, if I need to use more than one line, I should start with colon, open list brackets. Okay, let's try that again. David. Daniel, Douglas, Lisa, Leah, Aaron, Andrea, Deidre, 
JSON. Mm, let's see, Joshua, Janice, Janet, Benjamin, Francine, Francisco, Francisco. Okay, and then close it, colon, colon, and the closing list braces. Okay, so names, those are the names. Now let's say, for example, um, I want to filter out only the names that begin with D. So David, Daniel, Douglas, Deidre, and I think that's going to be it. So filter. Well, before I do that, how do you get the first letter of a name? Daniel. Zero. Now, Mathematica starts with index one. Haskell begins with index zero. Okay. So if I want the first character of a string, okay, that's the proper syntax to use. Okay. So therefore, filter. Oh, I don't have to use x. I could use any variable I want. How about t? I want that first, I, I prefer a space. I want that first character, and that has to be equal to d names. So I just filtered out David, Daniel, Douglas, Deidre. Those are the names that begin with the letter D. Okay. And there are other things that you can do. Uh, you can map a function to your list. Or you can map, I should say, you can map a function over your list. So for example, let's say I did something like this. Import data dot char. And I believe there's a function in that module uh, called to upper. Let me check. Type to upper. Okay. And it transforms a character to a character. It takes a lowercase character and transforms it into an uppercase character. And if the character is already uppercase, okay, then it stays uppercase. So let's see if we can change all the names in the names list so that all the letters are capital letters, okay? So how would we do that? So map to upper Douglas. Now we can see that all the letters in my name have been capitalized. Okay, so how would we do that? So map, we have a function here, I'll call it name. Okay, map to upper name, names, and I'm going to save that result in a new list. Uh, names caps. Names caps, and that should work. Names caps. Okay, so now we see that all the names have been capitalized. David, Daniel, Douglas, Lisa, Leah, etc., etc., all the way up to Francine and Francisco. All of the names have been capitalized. Okay, now things get a little more complicated with input and output. So what if I want to print those names? I want to print those names and also I want to uh, include those names in some kind of a sentence. Okay, so then things are going to get a little bit more complicated. To do something like that, I can't just use the regular map function. Well, actually I could, but then that 
creates a new wrinkle of complexity that we're not going to get into right now in this video. But let's keep it, let's keep it kind of simple. So what we can do is something like this. Map M, which is related to map. I'm, I'm going to take a function and apply it to every element of the list, but this time my output is, uh, it, it, it's, it's not a pure list. It's actually a list of outputs. It's actually, well, it's hard to, kind of hard to explain, but I'm not getting a pure list. I'm actually getting a bunch of side effects that are being output to my terminal screen. So it's a little bit different. It's sort of like a list of outputs, but it's not really a list anymore. Okay, so uh, name, put str line or put string line. Okay, name, that's the, that's how I concatenate strings and lists. Okay is one of my students in discrete math. Okay, and then names caps. Okay, so David is one of my students in discrete math. Daniel, Douglas, Lisa, Leah, etc. Okay? Now, if I use map M without the underscore, you're gonna see something really interesting. So let's try that. Let's get rid of that underscore. Okay, this looks almost just like what we have before, but this time we see a list of units. These are called, this is the unit type. This is the unit type, okay? Let's see if I can show that to you. Well, okay, that didn't, that, that's probably not easy for you guys to interpret, so for right now, don't worry about it. But this is a list of units. So <clears throat> when I apply an input-output function to a list, what I get, you know, is a side effect or a sequence of side effects, which is what this is. David is one of my students in discrete math, and Andrea is one of my students in discrete math, and Benjamin is one of my students in discrete math, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are side effects. But the real result is actually this list of units. This is actually the result that is being returned. What's being printed is called a side effect. <clears throat> and Haskell is a very interesting language because in Haskell, there is a really big difference between the side effects of a function and what the function actually returns. There is a big difference, and you won't find that difference in a language like C++ or Java or JavaScript or Python or Ruby or C, or one of those languages, but there is a very big difference um, between the side effects of a function and the actual return value or the result of a function. So that makes certain things in Haskell easier, but it also makes certain things in Haskell more complicated, okay? Um, Haskell, I think, is a really interesting language. It forces you to think about programming in a totally different way. So if you've been programming in Java for the past 10 years, Haskell is gonna be kind of hard because it's very different from Java. It's very different from C or C++ or, or even Python, okay? Um, I think for now that's really enough, guys. My video is almost 20 minutes long and I think that's, that's sufficient. Um, I will, uh, I will try to make and upload more of these videos during the semester. Um, most of the videos will be about Mathematica, but I will include, you know, three or four or five videos that explain how to do some 
interesting thing is in Haskell. Okay, I am not a professional Haskell developer. Uh, I'm not a professional Haskell programmer, but I've been experimenting with Haskell now for a few years on and off. And I think I've mastered most of the basics of the language. Uh, it's a very cool language, but it can be very challenging. It can be very challenging, okay? I think that's enough for now. Uh, take care, and see you next time.